What's up, everybody? This is Bun Nick. Um, I got a little topic that I want to uh, discuss. Um, had made a video talking about no proof of the slave trade, and uh, in that video, I had discussed a little bit about the um, actual slave ports that we have that's around the world that was supposed to be involved in the transatlantic slave trade or whatnot. Um, but uh, as you can tell, man, like I had told you in the video, it basically was no proof of these actual slave trades. If um, you really look at them closely, you'll start noticing, man, that not a lot of them really have forts, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, not a lot of them have docks. Like I was uh, trying to tell you in the last video, they don't really have docks. They basically, um, a lot of them are on beach fronts, on shorelines and stuff like that, man. So um, basically, uh, I'm just going to take a little bit of time and go through and look at some of these um, different places, you know. I've got this um, video, well actually I got this picture that's got a little bit of the information on it um, that I'll be referring to a lot. There's basically, I'm just going to go down the list basically from the side, it's got a little bit, um, as you can see it's got uh, Gory, Fort James, that say Bants Island, but that's really Bunts Island. Um, then you got Dixie Cove, Cape Coast, uh, Cormanton, and Wada, Bunny, Calabar, Luanda, and B B Bengala, Angola. That's what I'm gonna call it. But um, you know, we're basically gonna take a look at all of these um piece by piece, and then we're gonna uh, finish it up by looking at a couple of different forts. I call them, but they call them slave posts. But uh, basically, we're gonna uh, look at a couple of those towards the end of the video. Um, but uh, we just basically gonna get right off into it, man. Uh, we're going to uh, start off with the Gory Island, uh, Gory, Fort Gory, or whatever you want to call it, man. And it's um, basically, this is called the uh, Door of No Return, as they want to call it. It's basically supposed to have been the last place that most of the slaves went, or some of the slaves went, when they had nothing left out to go to the Atlantic or go to America. Um, basically, man, as you can see, off of some of the pictures, it's just a little prison-looking structure, man. It's not really big at all this is um this is one of the first ones that i actually found and practically the only one that i found that's got a representation of some type of dock in order to offload and unload slaves or whatever you know any type of thing you know um a lot of them that you have don't have any type of any type of means of unloading and doing what you call export and import you know uh, most of them just got what you would call some type of fortification and uh but you know this this one right here is basically it looks pretty old as you can tell it, it looks pretty old but it's a um basically man it's just to me like i said it looked like it's nothing but a little fort you know but um we're gonna move right along and go on to the next one uh down the list is which was fort james uh this right here um this right here is known as uh people call it kunta kente island or whatnot it's a tiny little place Supposedly, supposedly it was a um, island that was set up um, right off the coast, and this is where they would hold the slaves before they got ready to send them across the Atlantic. Um, same, pretty much same story that they tell about all of them, man. You know, you going as you go through it, you are gonna see a lot of similarities with the same stories basically being told because it ain't nothing but a myth, man. They ain't doing nothing but telling lies. You know, they put together this stuff and have paid a couple of people off to try to reenact these scenes and stuff like that but you know as we can tell man it's, it's really little to no evidence um of anything you know and uh we're just gonna keep moving right along though uh next thing we get to is called bunts island um this right here man it's a ghost town this is what they call it they say that there's basically no evidence left it's just a little couple of ruins and stuff like that man you know i'm pretty much convinced that what they did was just went around and found little places that either they had a war with these people and destroyed them and after they destroyed these places they uh you know would call them and claim them to be, be this within the last hundred years of 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 our existence you know because most of this stuff did not did not have a history of that prior to when they said so you know so uh like i was like i was saying though man we're gonna keep moving along and um the next one that's on the list, which is supposed to be Dixie Coast or Dixie Cove, it's just, uh, you know, when you look at it, it actually ain't got no location, man. Um, 
when you check it out, it's got nothing but a bunch of uh, propaganda from slave stuff. You know, it's just basically talking about the reg the regular old rhetoric that they always trying to push the bullshit about. Uh, you know, just slaves and and pictures of slaves. They ain't really got nothing, man. I mean, it's, it's it's not. You would think if this was such a big place and such a huge um outcome of slavery that they would have all this stuff, man. Um, but they don't. You know, and, it, and so let's let's keep moving, man. That that one's pretty much a waste of time. Let's let's move on to Cape Coast. This one is my favorite. Um, I actually had a relative of mine that went to this place, and uh, he actually got to see it firsthand. And the first thing that I had noticed when I was uh, talking to him about it was that they had no docks. This is when I really seen the information that really led me to looking at this because I mean I'm, I got a military mindset, man. And what I noticed is that you know when you look at some of the pictures, you see that. All of the stuff is facing towards the ocean. Everything is facing towards the ocean. And all the cannons and everything now are facing towards the ocean. Now, if you was snatching people up from Africa, strategically, you would have your, uh, your cannons and your guns and all your militia pointed towards the inland where you can defend off the people that's coming to get their folks, you know. But they didn't have no type of resistance. And in all of the pictures, if you notice them, man, go back and check. Just go look at them all. None of them really have any resistance to the mainland people. Now, if you snatch them up from the inland, you would obviously want to fight the people that you are snatching them from, right? So you would be trying to defend that. Um, but if you look at it, man, just look at it from any angle. It's got a whole bunch of beaches that's surrounded by rocks and cliffs. Now, if you want to build a fort, you want to build a fort typically on a place that's got real bad... Um, Real bad location for other people to enter. You know, you want to make sure that it's got some type of strategic location for yourself that you can have like a good vantage point in which you'll see. Just take a look at all of these things, man. All of them pretty much have the same thing and they all have a strategic location that's basically set out to be like a fort, man. You know, um, I may include a little clip of what a fort actually is if I can find something, man. It's just, you know, some type of comparison to tell you the difference between the fort and the uh, post or something like that, man. You know, I'm going to try to find some of that information. But um, if I can't, then, you know, I'm sorry. But um, we, we're going to move on to the next one, which is Cormington. Um, it looks like to me, when when I first initially started looking at this one, this one actually looked like the oldest um, ruined city of fort or castle or base or whatever they want to call it or whatever it was called prior to this because most of them was called castles most of them was either a fort or a castle and you can see both forts and castles always have some type of um you know they always have some type of dungeon and that's what they tried to make it out to be like these were the dungeons where slaves was held and all this other stuff but really we know that that's not true man we we just don't have the evidence to support any type of claims, and they don't neither. And when we go back through the history of it, the look, man, is just basically a whole bunch of broken claims, a whole bunch of broken nothing, man, you know. But um, just scrolling through the pictures, man, you can see that they pretty much recycle a lot of the same information. When you go and look into this stuff, if, it, if this has such an impact on our society and impact on America like so, then you have a lot of information to support it. You know, you got a lot of information to support it. Um, support the Indians being in America and, and stuff like that, man, but you don't have uh, all, all black people being in America, but you don't have anything that shows opposite of that. You know, you got a lot of history, rich history, rich heritage that involves black people that go all throughout the Americas, all throughout the world, honestly, and, you know, you don't see nothing to discredit that. But on the um, other hand, you don't have anything that says that we all migrated here, you know. That's the thing that you should be able to see, you know, and... um but uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting off a little t uh, topic, but uh, we're going to move right along to the next one, man, which is water, which was in ben uh, Benin. Basically, when you look at this fort, man, um, it's not a lot of information on it. It says a couple of things about it, but as I can tell, it's supposed to have been some type of capital. It's supposed to have been like a major place. It's supposed to have been like something that was very, very, very um, important to the slave trade. But uh, when you go into looking into the history, man, you don't find a lot of information on it you basically just see a whole bunch of the same rhetoric that you see on the other ones which is nothing you know and the more that you look the easier that you see that they basically don't have any material they're just making up a lot of stuff and going on with it you know um but basically man we're gonna move on to the uh next one which is bunny um this right here is supposed to be the igbo people now a lot of people know about the Igbo, they know that there's a Jewish tribe and they claim to be Jewish, so a lot of those people actually look like us, which is why I believe they had a lot to do with picking some of these people, because they do 
and they are relatives of ours. I mean, you know, when you look down into it, the history of it, and really trace their people and, the, and trace their heritage, you'll see that they actually do um, come from America, man. You know, um, I'm not going to get into that right now. But the thing about it is, man, that's where the Igbo people were supposed to come from. They said it was a lot of them that came, yada, yada, yada. You know, then we're going to get down to Calabar, which is in Nigeria. Um, right after it, man, when you go through, looking through this, you see that they ain't really got no type of information about it. Um, other than it was supposed to be in the Nigerian people. You know, the thing about it is, man, is that when you look into the reality of it, they don't have information, man. They're just making and piecing shit together. They're just putting together stuff and just going with it and running with it and just saying, hey, man, you know what? These people ain't going to look. They don't give a damn. We're just going to make up some type of story, put a little icing on it, and everybody going to eat it. And they're going to take it. They're going to love it. You know, and that's pretty much what we be doing, man. You know, um, so we got to stop that shit. Uh, you know, we're going to move on to the next one, though. And this is supposed to be in Angola. Um, it just got, it, it, it really got a few pictures of it, man. It don't have no pictures at all. Like, I, you know, the location of it was very skeptical and very hard to find. Um, you know, it's, it's really got nothing that remains, no type of remains of anything. No type of fort to even cling to and claim. They just basically said that this was a location that was being traded, man. I mean, it, it, it really, to me, don't make a lot of sense why they picked some of the location that they picked. But I'm guessing it must have had something to do with the places that they land and they actually went to um try to colonize that that's that's my only guess man because really if you look into the history of it you'll find that a lot of the people that was in um america or whatnot a lot of the people that was in africa um basically had migrated there themselves you know when you go back and trace their history i was talking to a, a partner of mine and um me and him chopped it up all the time and we was just talking about that and i was just discussing how a lot of times man you know we got a lot of people that talk about our migration but they don't talk about the migration of the African people a lot of African people um, are known immigrants or migrants you know but uh, you know I ain't gonna get on to that I'm gonna move on to the next one which is um Begula or whatever um this one right here man uh, this one right here supposedly said that they had about 7600 people uh, oh yeah before I forget I was reading some article when I was looking into this and it was talking about over 200 million people were uh, carried off to America's during the slave trade, which is absolutely crazy. They jumped the numbers from 12 million all the way up to, it went from 96, then it went down to 12, and now it's back up to 200. I don't understand the numbers, man. They, some Somebody lying somewhere and they're getting a lot of different numbers. Um, and I just don't understand where they're getting them from, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. But, um... Moving right along, man. You know, we're just going to um, go back go back into it and uh, look at some of the uh, places that we have in uh, America, man. You know, and this is what I found to be kind of interesting. Um, basically, it was a lot of different locations, man, um, that look like cities to me or look like forts to me. They don't really look like what you would call a slave post because, like I say, if you look at the strategic locations of them, most of them are pointing out. Most of them look like they are um, somewhere where they could be basically... They basically look like they could be um, just fighting off people, you know, waiting for these invaders, these colonists, these conquerors, you know, and they basically standing their ground and holding their ground. And another interesting thing that I seen when I went to looking into the American people, man, is that you see a lot of revolutions, you see a lot of revolts, you see a lot of documentation of these people bucking, basically. You see a lot of this, but when you're looking into Africa, you don't see a lot of this documentation of slave revolt, trouble, killing, none of that stuff, man. You know, and slavery was supposed to have stopped in the 1800s. So it can't be no excuse for why you can't have this documentation. We know that that's a lie. Um, <clears throat> basically, man, you know... Uh, the number one thing that I had looked into, though, man, was, uh, it was basically the San Juan, um, the San Juan, uh, fort. It's a pretty big fort, man, you know what I mean? It's not even, it don't look nothing like, like I say, when you look at the strategic location of them, they don't look anything like what you would call a, um, post or some type of place to store and slave, store and, and, and save slaves and, and put them in the, 
camps and you know even even with this you don't have any facilities to feed them you don't have any of these places like you say man like a lot of this stuff the cafeterias the the materials you know a lot of that stuff you don't have places to put them and some of these places they so tiny i mean it's like how could you even house anybody you can even you can't even house a couple of hundred people let alone 300 at a time i mean it's just insane to even suggest so but um you know man i stumbled across uh, upon this um Basically, this article right here that was talking about the uh, slave trade and it's about uh, the biggest slave posts in America. And uh, as you can see, it started off with Lu uh, Luanda, uh, but Bazari, whatever, uh, Benin, Ghana, uh, Senegal. And then, you know, it's going to tell you a little bit about the people, talk about 40 and 50 million Yoruba people. You know, look at these numbers, man. 40 million Igbo, I'm guessing. Um, 20 million Akon people. You know, uh, nine, uh, 13 million Mindy people. Um, you know, and the list just goes on. Talk about Charleston, South Carolina. This is a pretty uh, good article, man. I, I'll go ahead and um, you could uh, pause it at any point in time if you want to and just basically go back over it and look over it. Uh, I was going to try to record this at the same time that I'm recording the video, but it's kind of hard to do that, man. So, if everything don't line up, man, please don't hold me responsible. It's kind of hard to get it to do so. But uh, basically, man, um, you know, you just go over these, go over these um different locations when you get a spare time, man. Go over them and just look at some of the places, and you'll quickly start seeing, man, that um it don't really make sense. It don't add up. You know, some of this evidence should be there. You should be able to see it. You know, I went and started looking at some of the places that they have in Europe. Some of the different forts that they got out there, man. And I mean, it's it's a big comparison. Like, they got, they don't really, like, some of their forts look like forts. And they call them forts. And they look just like these places that they call in slave posts in Africa. But the thing about it is, man, is that um, when I went to looking at docks, it's apparent that the European people knew how to build docks. It was not something that they did not know how to do. So, if somebody tried to regurgitate that dumb shit that they didn't have no docks because they... At that, that wasn't the point in time that that was necessary, then y'all are fucking fools, and y'all are stupid. You need to go look at this shit and start realizing, man, that they had that capability. Now, why they didn't put on to everything like they usually do? They come in and, and colonize something. Colonize mean exactly what it sounds like. They're going to make a colony, and included in a colony is a fucking dock. So if you was out here doing all this colonizing, and you was slaving and buying people, and you was so-called having all these different places to load and unload people then a dock would be the least of your concerns to find. Not only that, man, a strategic location for you to have such industries would not even be a lo would not be a problem to find. But when you look up and down Africa, man, you see that they have a lot of beachy shores and they have a lot of cliff-like shores. You know, it's, most of them is built on the edge of rocks and, and, and cliffs and mountains. It's not like you have 100 miles of just straight sand beaches, you know. But, uh, you know, man, I, I, I just want to uh, make this video, man, to give y'all another direction to look. Um, this is something that I want to do, man. I, I, didn't, I don't feel like I really went through like I wanted to do. Um, but, you know, it's just one of the topics that I want to get out, man. Um, but like I said, man, I really appreciate y'all for everything that y'all do, man, because it really take a lot, you know, to um, support your people, obviously. <laughs> I mean, it seems like a lot for black people. That's that's one of the hardest things to do. You know, we like crabs in a bucket. We don't want to see each other rise. And I don't want to be the one that rise. I want to see us all do that. So, you know, as much as I'm doing research, I encourage y'all to do it behind me. I encourage y'all to go in and do your own research, you know. And feel free to reach out to me at any point in time if you ever got any questions. Or if you got any advice for me. Or if you got anything to help to uh, wake our people up, man. I feel... I would be more than happy to hear from you. I'd be more than happy to um, include some information that you got in the video. You know, I mean, uh, it's not really hard to make these videos. If anybody need help, feel free to hit me up. I'll give you a couple of um, pointers. You know, I make everything that I do off of my cell phone, man. So it's, it can't be too hard. I don't. I own a personal computer, but I use everything. Every video that I've ever made has been made off of my cell phone, man. So I mean, y'all can do this too. It's not hard, you know. But um, I'm going to let y'all go, man. I got to get ready to go ahead and take care of some business and get back to work. But, um, you know, continue to look into this stuff, man. Continue to 
help each other out. Continue to keep on researching and digging, man, because we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna dig ourselves up out of this eventually. But uh, till the next time, man, I I appreciate y'all. God bless y'all, and see y'all later. Yeah.